My cousin, Father Chris, he works with the Pittsburgh Penguins, and he gave me their calendar for this year, which is the 2020-21 calendar. And what's striking is, is that not that the fact that there's pictures of all the great Penguins, you know, Lemieux and Crosby and Malkin and Paul Coffey and all these great Pittsburgh Penguins. What strikes me is you go through the, the calendar, there are no scheduled games. What good is a hockey calendar without hockey games being scheduled? And you're just like, what, what are they doing? This is so strange. And it, 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 so for me, it was like, my goodness, it's, it's a lot like what we're going through. You know, like at Easter time, like we have all these churches, we have the greatest mystery ever, the lamb being slain for our, our salvation, and it's all closed. And so let us pray that we don't have to close our churches for Christmas and for Advent, and that we can continue to worship in a safe way. Because us Christians, we should feel the same way. It's like, we can't have a calendar without Christmas on it. You can't have a, a calendar without Sunday Mass and the Day of the Lord. I mean, all, I mean, obviously, since you all come to daily Mass, it's like, how do you go 24 hours without having an appointment with Jesus on our calendar? Like, can you honestly say you can do that? Because if you can, then obviously... This world has so influenced us Christians to the point where it's almost like, is there a difference between us Catholics and non-Catholics? See, for almost 2,000 years, the church has always influenced the culture and brought the culture towards God. But now recently, it's seemingly the culture that's going into the church and bringing the church into the culture. And it's so obvious to, to just see that. I was reading an article the other day uh, about this French priest who's from Nice, France. Looks like nice. It's not a nice place to live now. Three Catholics were slaughtered in a church just a couple weeks ago. If you remember in Normandy, there was a priest just like me, celebrating, oh, no, not holy, but this guy was <laughs> a dear priest, an elderly priest, who was just celebrating Mass at, right near Normandy, where the old beach invasion happened and all that, and he got slaughtered. And over 250, some, I think 280, some Catholics have been slaughtered over the last few years in France, just because they're Catholic. And um, so this priest who's from Nice, he's a diocesan priest there, he makes the reflection. And a lot of it has to do with um, Islamic radicals who have gone into our churches there and have done this. And so he makes the reflection of the latest guy who went and just and slaughtered a couple people in a church. And he said, what has the French culture offered the young Muslims who come into our country? Abortion, secularism, contraception, all these things that are not a part of a Christian culture. And that's what France is offering these immigrants who come in. And he said, for years, it's been our Catholicism, our Christianity, that informed the great countries of Europe. And now the exact opposite is happening. And so in the end, he says, we cannot allow our churches and our Christianity to be something that we just curl up into ourselves as if it's some, I'm using the word, spiritual spa. But instead, it's our very faith. It's the very Jesus Christ who left his comfort zone of heaven to come down on earth to start to spread the great gift of a relationship with Jesus Christ is what we're called to do. But if we don't have moments in which we encounter Christ on our daily calendar, then how do we ever expect to be able to influence the culture for, for the Lord's sake? Let us pray as we look into this next, you know, next Thursday's Thanksgiving, Advent, Christmas, New Year's, all of this. That regardless of the COVID, regardless of if the Steelers go undefeated, regardless of if we can have our families together or they're distant, that we put a calendar in place in which we put dates and times in which we are going to set aside to encounter Christ, to allow him to find us allow him to lead us because the craziness of the season and black friday 
I mean, you guys, I don't know if you know this, but my definition of hell, it's very simple. It's to go into a mall and not find an exit sign. It's to be trapped in perpetual shopping. There can't be anything more secular than that. To think that only if I can get the next iPhone, if only I can the next computer game, if only I can get the next TV, then, oh, I'll be in heaven. It's the most ridiculous thing. It's idolism. It's just the worship of idols. But I digress. So what am I saying? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, like today or tomorrow before Thanksgiving, just sit down, look at your calendar, and put down dates and times like, when are you going to go to confession? When are you going to do adoration? When are you going to go to Christmas Mass? And we're going to send out the Christmas Mass schedule. It should be out there soon. When are you going to, like, oh, and then, like, daily prayer. Like, if we want to be peacefulness in the time of this craziness and busyness, it's not because we're good people and we're virtuous and, oh, I can hunker down or I have a nice character. No, that's not what it is. It's the king of peace being crowned in our hearts when peace can reign. So this Sunday, maybe even before this Sunday, with Christ the King coming up, the Christ the King Peace Day, maybe each of us can take a time to look in our calendars and say, have we put those encounters with Christ there?